This is not the only best streaming settings for OBS videos out there, but most of them are kinda meh. Many of these videos don't explain what a B-frame is or a keyframe. And how do you even fix it when these best settings still cause your streams to lag? This is exactly what we are going to be talking about today. And I'm going to make sure that you never have to watch a video like this again. Oh, and I'm going to show you a secret setting that you should 100% be using to stop you disconnecting from Twitch too. Before we can do anything, however, we've got to open OBS. Head into the settings and open the video tab. Here we find only a few options, but these are very important because this is the basis for your OBS to function properly. Your base resolution is your canvas size, which is this thing. Every single part of your design depends on your canvas size. So we are going to make it easy on ourselves and we are going to set this to your monitor's resolution. Mine is 1440p, so I'm going to set it to that. For the output resolution, it fully depends on where you are streaming. If you're streaming to Twitch and your PC can handle it, then set your resolution to 1080p. If you're running an older or budget PC though, you might need to switch this to 720p if you're getting a laggy stream. To diagnose a laggy stream, head into the view menu and open the stats. Here you can see a whole load of different numbers and stats that can be of interest, but we are only here to find out if our stream lags. For this, there are three different kinds of lag. They only have two causes. If you have dropped frames, which you can see in the box down here, then that is because of your internet. It might be unstable, slow, or you might live on a very remote location. But there is very little you can do about this except making sure that you're on a cable connection or complain to your ISP. The interesting part for us are the missed and skipped frames. These are both caused by your graphics card, but in very different ways. Missed frames are the frames that your graphics card could not render in time. This usually means that your game is asking too much from your PC and you can choose to lower the quality in the game a little or restrict the frames in the game itself. If this doesn't help, it might also help to close out of other programs that you might be running. Skipped frames are frames that your graphics card skipped because the encoder chip on your graphics card was overloaded. The main reason this happens is because the game is putting too much strain on it or because you are trying to encode too many frames. By limiting your game from, for example, 144 or 120 frames per second to 60 frames per second will make the game look no worse to your viewers, but will halve or more the number of frames that need to be rendered. Many games allow you to do this in the game settings, but if they don't and you have an NVIDIA card, then there is a workaround that I can show you. Head into your NVIDIA control panel and open the program settings. Select the game you are running and scroll down to max frame rate. Here, set the max frame rate to 60 FPS or if you're on a budget to 30 FPS and you will make your OBS very, very happy. If you are streaming on YouTube, you can stream up to 4K and that means you don't have to scale your output resolution at all. By scaling it down from 4K or 2K to 1080p, you're reducing the amount of pixels that your PC and OBS have to send to your streaming platform. Which means that not only does it reduce the stress on your PC, it also reduces the stress on your internet connection. What kind of bitrate you can stream to Twitch and YouTube on, we will come back to in a little bit. If you have chosen to rescale your output resolution, then make sure to set the downscale filter to Langsos because that will give you the best quality. Now for your FPS. No matter if you are on YouTube or Twitch, neither supports anything above 60 FPS. And that has now also become the gold standard for streaming. So let's set it to that. If you have a budget PC, however, you can set this to 30 FPS and still get amazing visuals, but cut the rendering and encoding requirements in half. Okay, now it's time to dive straight into the meat of this, the output tab. In this video, we are focusing on making your stream quality amazing. We're not going to be looking at the recording tab at all. But if you are interested in the best recording settings, then I've got something for you near the end. For now, switch your output mode from simple to advanced. Set your audio track to 1 and leave your audio encoder on FFmpeg AAC. Then toggle on your VOD track and set that one to channel 2. While the VOD track doesn't protect you from DMCA strikes, as Twitch is heavily improving the live detection features on the platform, it does allow you to choose what sounds are saved in your VOD, so you can take out all alert sounds, sound effects, and 
make for a much calmer VOD experience with fewer distractions. And just to be clear, unless you are a DJ on Twitch, you should have your VODs on Twitch and publicly available. Don't put your VODs on subscriber only. It kills any chance that a new viewer that finds you offline has to see what your streams are really like. The next setting we're going to look at is the video encoder. We are going to set this to H.264. Depending on your GPU, NVIDIA or AMD, this will be called NVENC or AMD H.264. And this is exactly why we use it. It uses your graphics card to encode your streams. And the nice thing is that this will cause a minimal impact on the graphics card itself. Both NVIDIA and AMD cards ship with special chips on board, which are only used for encoding and decoding. So unless you are really capping out your graphics card, you should be using these. I speak to so many starting content creators that all have it set to X264, which uses your CPU instead of your GPU to save that little bit of power that's used by your GPU for encoding and decoding. But really, it's not better at all. Unless you really have to, because the game you are playing uses over 90% of your GPU, don't do it. Use H.264, not X.264. Okay, we are leaving the rescale output where it is. We've already rescaled our output in the video tab. So next up is rate control. CBR, or constant bit rate, makes sure that no matter how much work OBS has to do, it always sends a constant amount of data to your streaming platform. While this does mean that if there is too much work, the quality dips for a second or two, the important part is that Twitch will never throw a fit because Twitch doesn't like it when you go over their bitrate cap. If we have a look here, you can see that Twitch claims the maximum bitrate is 6,000 kbps. But did you know Twitch can actually handle up to 8,000? To enable this, quickly go into your stream tab and make sure you are logged in with Twitch. Then at the bottom, toggle ignore streaming services setting recommendations. However, if you stream above 8,000 kbps, Twitch will absolutely throw a fit and only stream in 144p. So to make sure we have a little bit of leeway here, I tend to set my bitrate to 7,500. YouTube, on the other hand, allows you to stream with a bitrate of up to 40,000 kbps. And YouTube generally needs more bitrate for a similar quality stream. So when you're streaming to YouTube, set your bitrate to 10,000 kbps. I'm going to leave a link in the description below to Twitch and YouTube's official guidelines on how much bitrate is needed for a specific quality, but those only tell half the story. What you want to make sure is that your upload speed is high enough. Your download speed, and that's the number most people remember, just doesn't matter. To test this, you want to go to speedtest.net and press the big ol' start button. For a bitrate of 4000 kbps, you need a little bit over that 6 megabit upload. For 7500 kbps, you need a 10 megabit upload. And for 10,000, you need about a 14 megabit upload. This is to compensate for all the other internet traffic going on, such as your game. One of the coolest features in OBS that most people don't even think about is keyframes, because it reduces the CPU usage of OBS by up to 40%. And it's something that has been used by YouTube and other streaming platforms for years. I recall Tom Scott doing an amazing video on it, which I will link in the description down below. But what this does is it breaks up your screen into squares. And once per interval, it chooses one frame and re-renders every single pixel in that frame completely. This is called the keyframe. Then it starts checking between the squares in the keyframe and any following frame if anything changes. If nothing changes, it just doesn't re-render that square. However, if something does change, it can use all the power it saved on the squares that didn't change to re-render that quickly and efficiently. I'm not going to go into the exact details on how OBS detects changes, but this is the least you need to know to understand why keyframes are important. They are so important that if you stream to YouTube, you are required to set them to two seconds or less. So let's just set them to two seconds. For your preset, you will want it set to P7, which is the highest quality you can achieve. However, if you have a budget PC, you can go as low as P5 or even P4 in a pinch. We are going to leave the tuning to high quality and set the multi-pass mode to two passes full resolution. What this does is instead of encoding the video once, it actually encodes the video twice 
making sure to average the two and catch any encoding errors for the best possible quality. If you're on a budget PC, you can absolutely skip this step and simply leave it on single pass or even go to multi-pass quarter resolution if you think that's a better option. Normally, this should not impact the quality of your stream too much. The rest of these are directly dictated by Nvidia or AMD and I have an Nvidia card so we're gonna go through those. You're gonna toggle look ahead off, cycle visual tuning on, leave your GPU on zero unless you have multiple GPUs in your system and at that point you probably know what you wanted to do here. <laughs> As for B frames they are a lot like the keyframes. But instead of referencing a specific frame every two seconds, they look at the frames around them. So if we set the maximum number of B frames to two, which is what we will set it to, it will look back and forwards two frames to check if there are similarities it doesn't have to re-render. I really found that once I started learning what this stuff is, instead of just following the tutorials online, I understood so much better what a marvel of a powerhouse OBS truly is. With these settings done, it is time to make you sound as good as possible. So head into the audio tab. We are going to set your sample rate to 48 kilohertz and channels to stereo. Then in your global devices, turn them off. Just turn them all off. The problem with global devices is that they are global, which means that they can be heard everywhere. So you can't control where you want each of these to be active. I've heard from a friend that he once forgot to mute himself and suddenly he and his 120 viewers were together on the bathroom listening to him pee. Instead, we are just not going to add your microphone to your Be Right Back screen. Before we do that though, make sure you scroll down to the advanced settings and set your monitoring device to your headset. Now, before I show you my secret way of recovering from disconnections and even the occasional blue screen without ever disconnecting from Twitch, let's make sure your audio works on stream. Make a new scene and call it audio scene. In this scene, we are going to add your microphone, your desktop sound, your music, really all the sounds that you want to add except sound bites and alerts and we are going to add those back to the scenes you want them in, such as your game scene. Hop into the scene and add a new scene source. Here, choose your audio scene and click OK. Now head to the audio mixer and click the cogs at the bottom of the dock to open the advanced audio settings. Here you can see six boxes for each of your sources. And remember the audio and VOD track we chose earlier? Yeah, you should make sure that there is a tick in the first column for each of the sources you want to hear on stream. In the second column, we are only going to put a tick if we want to hear that source in the VOD. The rest of these are for recording only, so you can untick all of them if you want to. It is honestly one of the worst feelings when your internet hiccups, you disconnect from Twitch, and when you come back, your viewers have gone from 10 back to two. And this simple feature protects you from almost every single internet hiccup, OBS crash, even blue screens. Head into the settings and go into advanced. Scroll down to automatic reconnect and make sure to enable this. Set the retry delay to two seconds with a maximum number of retries of 15. This way it retries for a total of 30 seconds. Then head into your Twitch creator dashboard, settings and stream. Right under your stream key, Toggle on the disconnect protection. Now when your stream disconnects, it doesn't actually end your stream. Instead, your viewers get this amazing image for about 30 seconds, preventing them from disconnecting from your stream and making sure you can make it back online before they're all gone. With all this set up, you are pretty much ready to make the best streams possible. Except for one very important thing. You are not set up to record your content for other platforms yet. Luckily, I have already prepared a video right here that shows you the best OBS settings for recording, so I will be waiting for you there. And as always, stream better, stream smart.